Well everyone, today I'm officially back. For those of you who don't know, the last four videos that have been uploaded to this channel were made in advance for several reasons. For one, we were close to getting evacuated. For two, I was on my honeymoon, I had a great time, we're back though, and I'm excited to talk about what's not very exciting, which is next year's iPhones. A lot of people already trying to hype that up, but once again, Drew is here after the new iPhones have already dropped to tell everyone, calm down down okay i thought 2018's excitement was a bit of a stretch given we were just getting different sizes of what we already had in 2017 cheaper option bigger option you guys know what happened but that means that 2019 is going to be even more complicated and even harder to get excited for given what are they actually gonna do so I know a lot of people would say this is way too premature, it's way too early to talk about leaks and rumors, but here's something you have to consider about this year's iPhones. We actually predicted both the screen size, both the lineup, and everything that was going to be coming out in 2018 just a couple of weeks after the new 2017 iPhones dropped. There's that picture that was thrown around the internet like crazy saying, okay, here's basically what Apple's gonna do. They're gonna make a slightly better 5.8 inch OLED version, they're gonna make a 6.5 inch OLED version, and they're gonna make a cheap, more affordable, aluminum-built LCD panel display that looks similar to an iPhone 10, but uses LCD technology, doesn't have 3D touch. All of these predictions that were made like 11 to 12 months before the phones actually dropped turned out to be surprisingly accurate. Now, throughout the year, we had a lot of different rumors come about, like the new iPhone SE getting refreshed, turned out it didn't happen, or the iPhone 9, as we used to call it, would have 3D touch, or it wouldn't, or some people even said it would have an aluminum back and no wireless charging. Really Really glad that didn't end up happening, but while it may have been a giant roller coaster of different leaks and reports that were coming out all at the same time between prices and features and maybe triple cameras or bigger batteries, it all stemmed back to that original core rumor that started almost a year ago of, well, there's going to be a 6.1 inch LCD, 6.5 inch OLED, and a slightly updated 5.8 inch OLED. So to be honest with you, probably the rumors you should take into consideration and accept are the most accurate are probably the rumors coming out right now. Given that there's probably going to be a lot of delusion, a lot of persuasion that go on throughout the rest of 2019, maybe even from me. Maybe I'll see enough evidence, maybe I'll see enough rumors to be like, okay, you know what, I think this is actually happening. But it'll all stem back to the rumors that we're getting right now, which, once again, there really aren't many. I know a lot of people were looking at 2018 as, ah, this is kind of, you know, it's an S upgrade. We've got the 10s, the 10s Max, so it wasn't meant to be major, and a lot of people hold out on their iPhone purchasing because they were like, well, this is an S upgrade, I'll wait till 2019 when things really get cooking. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you wait another year, I'm sure technology will get better. But to those thinking that there was going to be some type of drastic, huge design upgrade, because two years have gone by now since the release of the iPhone 10, I would just try to encourage you to not keep your hopes up. Because honestly, the rumors that are dropping right now aren't that exciting. For one, we've got a slightly smaller notch. They're saying they're either merging sensors together or what used to take four sensors can now take three to two, meaning that the notch notch on the top of iPhones, which has looked the same since the first iPhone 10, is going to get a little bit smaller. Not gone. It's not going to be completely removed. And likely, you're probably not even going to get that camera hole that you've seen on some Android concepts right now. Perhaps the Galaxy S10 will have a hole at the top of the phone. Personally, I don't really find that as less intrusive. It's still annoying and it's still something that stands out, but I guess there's more pixels than there would be for a notch, so I guess it's a tiny bit more immersive. But anyway, you're not getting that on the 2019 iPhone. There's no rumors to suggest that. And also, this is actually a report. This is actually something an analyst came out and said. Next year's iPhones are getting the exact same water resistance. Oh my god! Wow! So in case you were wondering if next year they're going to make the iPhone super water resistant, no, the current water resistant level is going to be the same water resistant level. Other developing rumors are saying it's going to support 5G, which a lot of people seem to be excited for, but I don't really care a lot about because I know that no matter how fast my speeds are on my phone, my carrier is going to throttle it after a certain amount anyway. So 5G, I, I get that it has its uses for cars and stuff like that, and there are applications where 5G is going to be very, very helpful. But when it comes to phones, 4G LTE can load YouTube videos and it can load Twitter just fine for the majority of what you do on your phone. I don't know why you need 5G. If we're talking 5G for a computer, that I would be interested in. But I just know whatever carrier supports it, they're gonna down throttle you after you use 15 gigs of hotspot. So that's why I'm not terribly excited for that either. Of course, you can expect the CPUs on the iPhones to get even faster than they already are. They're already industry leading. They're already killing everyone else and they're going to continue to kill everyone else. The A13 chip, I'm sure is going to slaughter the Snapdragon 855 
5, so there won't be any surprises there. One rumor is that the iPhone XS Max, and I'm just talking about the Max now, will get a triple camera setup instead of a dual on the back. Yay. I mean, I, what are you gonna do with it though? I'm not against having triple cameras because I like giving photographers and videographers options, but regardless, adding a dual camera, I think we have to admit was way more exciting than adding a third because now they can do several different things with that third lens. They're either going to add like a 5X telephoto, so you'll have your regular telephoto and then you'll have your super telephoto that zooms in really, really close, or they're gonna do monochrome, so it just helps still images look better. In my opinion, the most boring option they could do, but the ExoMark, liked that the P20 Pro did it, so perhaps pictures will look even better than they already do, but I think they look fine for now. The differences in camera quality for pictures over the years is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so if you have to add an entire extra lens just to make it a little bit better, okay, I guess that's an interesting selling point because people will look on the back and be like, ooh, three cameras, okay. They could do an ultra-wide because a lot of people seem to enjoy ultra-wide shots on smartphones. I, I agree, they look kind of cool. It's nice to have that option, but it's not really something I've been in a situation with a lot in my life. I'm never like, man, if only I had an ultra wide lens right now. Usually I just pull out my phone, take the picture, it works fine. And I also think the standard lens on iPhones is plenty wide angle enough. There's plenty of things they could do with the third lens. I just don't think it's going to make that big a difference in our day to day. It will definitely separate the Max from the other iPhones because you'll look on the back and see that extra lens. So it'll be like a signature design uniqueness that only the Max has. And maybe some people will just want to have the best camera possible. So they'll get the Max anyway. But yeah, regardless, even if they had the third lens, which again is a rumor, could not happen, I don't think it's gonna make that big a difference. If I had to pick though what I want them to do, I would say go with like the super zoom, the 5X telephoto lens, so you can zoom in really, really close and still have optical image stabilization and not lose any quality. You're still recording at 4K, 60 frames a second, but be super zoomed in on the action because I constantly run into the issue of things are going on around me, but I can't get close to them either because I don't want to disturb the animals or I'm in my seat watching some type of event going on, having that extra super zoom lens, I think would be super, super helpful. So fingers crossed, I hope they take my advice and go with the super zoom lens. There's reports of Face ID too, so just Face ID getting a little bit better. A lot of people have problems with it anyway, so I think most people are not going to be super excited that Face ID is getting better. They're just like, well, it's about time. I think it works great already. Maybe taking a lot of what they've learned with the iPad Pros and adopting Face ID similarly onto the iPhone so that it can work from more angles, work from further away that there's definitely room for improvement when it comes to face id but at the end of the day it's still face id i don't think it's going to make that big a difference so i know a lot of you are expecting that since 2018 was an s year 2019 was going to be a bigger refresh i honestly don't think so i think you're gonna get two s upgrades in a row whether they're calling it iphone 11 or iphone 10 again iphone 10 2019 edition they could they could mess up the naming scheme as much as they want to me it's already destroyed there's no point in trying to save it but i don't expect it to be that massive of an upgrade. I'm not even sure if they're going to upgrade the iPhone XR or they're just going to lower the price of it. I think the success of the iPhone XR over the next year is going to depend a lot on whether or not there's going to be a successor to it. Like, are they going to make a XR with a slightly better specifications, better water resistance, higher pixel density, given that appeared to be such a big complaint. Maybe if they're doing LCD technology, they could have 120 hertz. ProMotion on an iPhone sounds amazing. And while I know that no one yet has been able to put Pro motion on an OLED display, the Asus ROG phone has a 90 hertz OLED display, which is, in my opinion, noticeably better than 60, but not quite as good as 120. But still, I think that would be a perfect little compromise, a little middle ground, as if in 2019, all of the iPhones with OLEDs get bumped up to 90 hertz, not quite 120, but still a noticeable bump up, and you can have a slightly more buttery experience when using iOS. So that's pretty much everything we've heard so far. If there's more stuff, obviously, I will keep you posted. That's a lot of what we do on this channel. So let me know what features I've missed or features you're excited for down in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here. I will see you in the next one.